Welcome to Mr. Mike's. I'm Mr. Mike. I'm going to show you how to reupholster a Fiero seat with a leather seat cover. First thing you need to do is get the seat out of the car. And to do that, I have a safety hint for you. You'll need a 13 millimeter socket. And what you want to do is slide the seat all the way back in the car and remove the front ones. There's two nuts. Then slide the seat all the way forward in the car to expose the ones in the back. The reason you want to do it that way is because the arrows have a spring right here that helps move the seat forward when you're sitting all the way back. And let me show you what happens if you deal with taking the seat out of the car with this spring loaded. If you're working with the seat and carrying it around or you start doing what I'm going to show you to do and you were to accidentally touch the actuator, what's going to happen is that's going to pop back on you and it's got to hurt. So slide the seat all the way forward in the car, then take the back ones out, then remove it from the car. As soon as you get it out of the car, remove this spring. Now you won't hurt yourself. Next thing you want to do is with a 13 millimeter socket, remove the tracks. I'll take a piece of chalk and put a little arrow that points frontwards so that you don't get them mixed up. I also recommend that you do one seat at a time so that you don't get any of the parts mixed up. One at a time. Take off the tracks. set them aside and there's four small bolts that go with it. While you got the 13 millimeter socket out, there are two 13 millimeter bolts on the side of the hinge. Right here, just take them out. There's a plastic upholstery protector that keeps the hinge from eating into the upholstery. Take it out, put it aside. Put these bolts back in. This is an upholsterer's trick. With these bolts still in the seat, you'll be able to find them once the new upholstery is on. Now the last thing you have to do is remove this hinge pin and it's uh, got a Torx head on it. You'll need a T50 Torx bit. It's the same one that removes General Motors seat belts. There's the bolt. There's a little plastic washer that fits on the end of it. Don't lose that. And there's a washer to protect the upholstery. This is a real big hole. You, didn't, you don't need to put this bolt back in to, to find where it is. Uh, it's easy to find. They're apart. The seat itself is held on with hog rings. And the hog rings are also what holds it down here. This is called listing. It's listed here, here, and back here. What we're going to do is remove the hog rings from the bottom so we can peel it up and then remove the interior hog rings. I had to find this, uh, it's called a dykes or a diagonal cutter. That's what you use to twist the old hog rings off. Just like that. The arrows have this plastic thing under the seat that I guess keeps junk from getting underneath there. Put that aside. Pull it over the edges. And there are these listing rods. Can you see that? Pull out the hog ring. And 
pull out the rod. There's one on each side. There will be some hog rings in the back of the seat, back by the tail. into here. Underneath them, down about a quarter of an inch, is a wire. And I put the seats on this way, it gives it a better fit. Using a razor blade, just cut a small V and you'll be able to get down to that wire. One here and one in the back. My seat's hovering in the back instead of at the top because when you do it at the top, they rip. After you've found these wires, take a little spray glue and, uh, oh, in your new upholstery kit, you'll find three pieces of foam, marked one, two, and three. Small, medium, and large. Spray glue on those. One. Two. Three. Leave a space so you can get to those wires. Then you take the new cover, and it has a wire already built in here and here. That's the back. And if you turn them inside out because you want to look at them, just be careful you don't poke the wires to the front. Those rods I showed you that came out of here, they fit in these long ones. But we put these in first because it's easier that way. Make sure you're not putting it on backwards. Press the wire down into the foam. Center it up. It's pretty self-explanatory. Trick number two. Uh, when you catch the listing wire, make sure that you catch just the wire in the list. Don't catch the upholstery or you'll poke holes in it. One in the middle. And one on each end will do. sleeve, the listing sleeve, push it all the way back, and you'll see it pop out of the end there, right there. There's a hook or a hole right back here that this slides into. And then in the front, see where it was. Just put that down there and then hog ring it down. Oh, I pulled on it to make sure it was caught. It wasn't. Try again. on 
they're good now. Here's the other side. These rods are the hardest part. Make sure it sticks out the back. Slide it under that little thing there. Give a tug on it, make sure it's hooked. And hog ring down the front. There. Now we got it attached on these three sides and in the center. One more in the back. The Sony guy. Just grab the little listing wire here. And hook it to that wire you exposed by cutting away the foam with a razor blade. One in the middle and one on each side is fine. over the edges. This is called the salvage. You'll see a mark in the old foam where the salvage used to be. It's just at the high point of the bolster. Take this. Use your hands to kind of roll it over that edge so that the seam is right on the top. And then roll it over the edge. Straighten out a little in the middle. Roll that edge over on top of the bolster. And roll it over. Then do the backs. Pull this seam straight back. You know, get rid of all the wrinkles and roll it over the edge. If it's going to want to rip anywhere, it's going to be right down here at the bottom. It ends up down here. This is a smaller dimension than this, so you have to push these two together so that it doesn't rip. There you go. Flip it upside down. Oh. Put a towel or something down so you don't scrape the leather. Unless you're working on the living room floor. First ones you want to do are these two sides. This will smooth this out by pulling this down and back. Ugh. And you're going to hog ring it right to where Pontiac did. This first one's tight. But if you get this right, everything else will line up. There are four hog rings on each side. They go into a hole stamped in the frame, which is sort of buried in the foam. One, two, three, four. If you have trouble finding them, just put a little mark here with a magic marker. It'll help you find the, the position. Because it's important to hook these down good. Or else the seat will come off. Do the one in the back first. And just work your way up. Leather 
stretches, so this front tab hooks back here. You can see real easy where those went. I want to just give a little tug on it. And hook it down in the middle first. Then on each side. Now with the front. Uh, you want to make sure you can still see these little bolts here. I had a pair of scissors somewhere. It'll make it a lot easier when you put the tracks back on. If you can see them all. Tail runs around the back. Oh, don't forget that little floppy thing. Put that there. And I'll bring the tail on where Pontiac did. back in the side? Well, this one's already been cut, but when you have the bolts sticking through, it's real easy to find where you can just cut around them. And then there's the big one over here for the pin. That's easy to find. And uh, you're done. Take a coffee break first. here are two more hog rings that go into those rods. Take them out. Flip it up and right underneath the headrest you find some more hog rings. Take them out. here, you can see it sticking out the sides. It's where that little loop is that you stick the rods into. It's raw line there. Take a razor blade. You can feel the wire. Just cut this back a little bit. And take out the foam. If you're a professional, you can feel the wire and you won't need to do this, but it makes it very easy to just be able to see the wire. That's all you do on this part. On the original cover, something GM does is sew foam into all the covers so that they can put different covers on the same seat and make it all look the same, or make them look different, but it's all the same underneath. Take a razor blade. There's a big foam in here and here that we want to glue back on there. So right inside this seam, just run the blade down like so. And 
you can take out this piece of foam. Now, unlike the one, two, three on the bottom, I prefer that you reuse this one because it's got a funny shape to it. It's got this indentation and little lumbar here. It works real good to just reuse it. It's a lot easier. If you ha don't have any original seats or you want to keep your original covers, then you can just use a regular piece of foam. Looks to be about an inch thick. You could use two halves if you wanted to. Two half inch. But other than that, we're done with that. And with a little bit of spray glue, put the top one up here, and the bottom one down here. Make it so that that fat part is down near the bottom and line the top up with that wire so you can still see it. This just tacks them in place. Now, the backrest is just like the bottom. There's some wires sewn in it right here. And there's a long listing sleeve here for the rods. The rods on the backrest are shorter than the ones on the bottom. And they just slide in there like you saw. Uh, there is a headrest on this one which makes it just a little bit more difficult. I'm going to show you a trick. When we sew things together, it's left with some junk on the inside. It's called the salvage. And on a Pontiac headrest for the Fiero, you want this salvage all folded in so you get a nice shoulder on the seat. I'll show you. Start by making sure that the front goes on the front. Don't put it on backwards. The headrest is like inside the seat here. Pardon me, but it helps to do it on the floor. Grab the headrest right here in the corners. Slide it over the top. Pull on it pretty good. Make sure the edge of the headrest is going all the way down to the bottom of the foam. There we go. It will often help if you push the seat a little bit down further than you're going to need to expose these shoulders right here. Catch that? You can see that the shoulders are straight, and you've got the seat on straight. This is that salvage in here I showed you about. Try to just grab it and twist it with your fingernails. Don't scratch the leather. But just make sure that all that salvage is all rolled in this one way. Give you a real nice look. That's all there is to it. Flip the seat back up without disturbing the headrest. So you can see that first wire. Pull the headrest down a little bit and hog ring it on. Just like Pontiac did. You can tell if the seat is centered by checking where the seams hit the foam down here. Get it on crooked, you'll have to take it apart and do it again. That, that looked on real good. Now I'm going to show you another little trick. 
Hold on just a second. In with your seat, you'll find a little package of this white fluffy junk. It's cotton. Take a piece about like yay. Fold it over the top of your fingers. And just stuff it up into that shoulder. Those original covers have been on your car a long time. And they're on tight. And they have a tendency to squish this foam down. By sticking a little bit of cotton up there, you can get a nice shoulder on the seat. It's not entirely necessary, but it really makes a difference. So you've stepped it up there. And get the seat a nice, real, real nice look. Okay, pull it down a little bit. And you'll be to where that second wire is. I'll bring it down once in the middle. side is fine. Don't go too close to the edge of the listing. It may rip. We'll stay about an inch back. Oh, at this time I wanted to show you level with this top listing one here, and the one in the middle of the seat actually. There's a little loop right here, and over here, that's where the rods slide up under. Under, Because the backrest has a back, this is a little bit more difficult than the, doing the cushions. Slide the seat down. show you real good. Just make sure that these seams are landing on the high points of the bolsters, just like the bottom. Now I gotta put those rods back in. I told you before that this is the hardest part. But don't blame me. This is Pontiac's great idea. Reach up underneath here so you can feel them pop out of the end of the listing strip. Push on it, pull on this rod, make sure it's caught under there. Just pull on it, it doesn't come up, it's hooked. Now the looped end goes down at the bottom. And I'll bring it on. up under there, feel when it comes out, feel for the loop, stick the rod under the loop, push it in a little more, yeah it's hooked on good, and then hog ring down the bottom. Pull all this out of here by just 
just going like this a whole bunch of times. It's easier on the floor. Another good way to work with leather seats is slap them around. I'm pulling on this bottom seam, the one that has the rod in it. That'll pull it down nice. Oh, need that towel back. Start with the bolt sides and attach these two parts together and then the tracks. We'll need to remove these bolts, but it's a very good idea to put them in and then cut around them so you don't end up cutting a hole someplace it shows. upholstery protector for the hinge. Uh, it, has a, it has markings on them. The L faces the upholstery. Slide that in there. It has, it has two holes in it that matches these two holes. Slide that in there and you'll find it's a lot easier to put this bolt in and get it to go through that top hole because you can't really see up in here when you're putting it together. This has been cut away so I can see the hole. Get that to line up there. Fingers start it. Put it in a little bit of the way. Just make sure it doesn't fall out. And then the uh, one in the front here, real easy to find. And bolt them on. That leaves the hinge pin. And we got that washer that protects the upholstery. Set it there. Got this little plastic thing that goes on the pin. Keeps the seat from rattling around or something. Do it this way so you can see better. Put the, whoop, put the pin back in. Go through the washer. 
washer. Back in there. Catch it. And here's that T50 Torx bit again. That's it. Now the tracks. 13 millimeter. They are. There was a wire that connects the two locking mechanisms. Uh, I don't take it apart. You can just leave it on the ground just like this, put it right back on. See the little arrows I put on there? That's front, that's down. You want to put the back ones on, well, you want to get the bolts first. You want to put the back ones on first because they have holes. The ones at the front of the seat have slots. That allows for any manufacturing differences or sloppiness. If you try to put the front ones in first, though, you'll have a real hard time getting the back ones in. You can go ahead and peg these down. See, put the front ones in. And then the killer spring. There's a loop here at the top that the front of the spring hooks into. And then there's a little tiny notch back here that the back fits into. There, not so bad, huh? Well, there's one. Here's the other. Pull them back in the car. You're ready to go. Uh, clean them with soap and water. Put a little Lexol on them to keep them from drying out. And if you ever get like a pencil or ballpoint pen or something like that on here, I find that spraying a little WD-40 on a rag and then carefully wiping it will usually get rid of just about anything. Thank you for watching.